Hey everyone, Sonny here, uh, filming from a slightly different venue than normal because I'm traveling, so this is just the hotel that I'm in. Anyway, let's get into it. So I wanted to spend a bit of time talking about factory functions. Um, it's a design pattern that's used a lot, uh, especially in JavaScript, um, but I just wanted to take a little bit of time just to talk about the kind of differences between what a factory function uh, is compared to other things like constructor functions or even classes um, and some of the benefits of using factory functions as well. Factory functions uh, are similar to things like constructor functions but uh, a nice thing about them is they don't require the use of the this keyword or the use of the new keyword. So that already removes some of the kind of um, like the syntactic fog that you get when using certain uh, devices or mechanisms in JavaScript. So that's already a good thing. Factory functions are effectively just regular functions. Uh, the difference, I guess, is the fact that with a factory function, we always return an object. And that object will contain any kind of values or methods, um, you know, or, or whatever it is that we want to expose, which is just a nice way of saying, make available for use. If you've watched the previous video, you'll know that there is a football analogy that we used. Uh, and I'd like to, um, well, firstly, recommend that you take a look at that video if you haven't already, um, because it will give you some insight into how constructor functions work as well. So that may help to illuminate the differences between a constructor function and a factory function. Anyway, so in our previous video, we set up our team and player function uh, like so, as you can see on the screen at the moment. Um, you'll be able to see that they take parameters and we assign those parameters to values on the respective player uh, and team context, which is the this key keyword. We then create new teams and players by creating variables and assigning them to a new team and a new player. But on the screen, what the constructor equivalents looked like from our previous video. Uh, and now here are our player and team factory functions. So you can see that we've named them player factory and team factory. Uh, this isn't a requirement to, you know, put factory in the function name. It's just rather a convention sometimes that some people use when creating factory functions. Now we can see that there's some key differences here between our player factory and our player constructor. Now while both accept a name parameter, the player constructor assigns it to this dot name, whereas we haven't created any internal value that holds the name parameter. Instead, we create an inner get name function that returns the name parameter. Uh, and the kind of the beauty of this approach is that it removes the ability to be able to update our player's name. Um, so if we, you know, just decided to create something such as uh, const sunil equals player factory uh, sunil, then the only way we'd be able to access sunil.name is through the sunil.get name function. Therefore, we have the ability to get the player name but no ability to set the player name. So in other words, we can't just simply write something like sunil.name equals Tony. Okay, so that's how you go about creating factory functions in JavaScript. As you can see, there are uh, quite a few really powerful things that you can do through using them. Uh, and it's, you know, it's another design pattern that hopefully you uh, now kind of have in your toolbox. Uh, if you found this video to be useful, then be sure to like and subscribe, do all the good stuff that people do on the internet. And I look forward to speaking with you in the next video.